We spoke polygon charts, half circle, gauge charts, and this is what it looks like. Now, it might seem quite simple, it might look visually easy, but there's a lot of complexity that goes into this. We are going to be rendering a half circle in the background, and we are going to be drawing on top of it a field half circle gauge, so the blue. We're going to do this by creating a data model and then applying the tricks that we've learned in terms of drawing circular shapes, data densification, and we are going to achieve this pretty cool effect. So I hope you're excited as I am, because this is one of the fun charts to build. So let's get to it and let's open up Tableau Desktop. So we will start by loading in the sample superstore data source. Let's go to Microsoft Excel. Let's locate your file and double click. Once connected, let's drag orders onto the query panel. And give it a second for it to load. Don't go to sheet yet. We are going to create a data model that we will apply to our data source. So let's double click on the logical table. Now we can see the physical tables. We are going to go into Excel or whatever notepad editor not notepad, yeah, notepad, why not? Whatever editor you fancy, and type the following. Type, background, background, foreground, foreground, path, 360, 362, 1, 362, 1. The reason being is if you have a spreadsheet editor like Excel, OpenOffice, you can do this. Or you can create the text in Notepad or Sublime, which is what I typically do. However, let's copy this information. And now let's paste this into Tableau. The key here is that once the data is pasted in, we are going to perform a Cartesian join. So under the join condition, we will click on create join calculation and just type 1. On the other side, we will do the same. And because we have one on both sides, it means that for every record in orders, we will have four records corresponding from our model. Beautiful. Now let's rename sheet to model and with this said, with this done we are ready to start building our data visualization. So let's click on sheet 1. As we're going to be doing data densification, let's get used to our normal bag of tricks. Let's right click on path and create a path bin object. Go to create, bins, enter in 1. And click OK. What we will do now is also create an index. I love this function. We are going to type index minus 1. So an index calculated field. We are now going to just draw a simple circle for now. Create calculated field. X. Be careful this time we want to start Horizontally, so we are going to start with cos, radians, index. Typically, I have sign there, but what's the life without whimsy? Let's click OK. Let's create our y, and we have sine, radians, and index. Let's click OK. Now, let's build our first circle, shall we? Let's take region and drop that onto columns. Let's take X and drop that onto columns as well. Let's take Y and drop that onto rows. And also, let's locate type from the model and let's drop that into rows. I want us to take path bin, drop it into rows. What I want to do now is change the mark type to polygon so we can play with this. 
Right click on path bin. Make sure that show missing values has been selected. Now let's drag this onto path. I want us to take light and drop that onto color. Keep hand on control so we copy that. Now the last step is to configure our table calculations. So I'll right click on X, go to compute using path bin. Let's do the same with Y. Beautiful. Now, as we have in our data visualization, let's edit the foreground color to be blue and the background color to be a slight shade of gray. You can see so far, this is nice and simple. Now what we want to do is modify our X and Y calculations so that we don't just draw a circle but we draw a half circle. So let's modify this and we'll talk through it as we go. So let's edit X first. What I want to do is the following. I want to type if index is less than 181, i.e. the halfway point. Then I want us to display the following. Else, we are going to have cos radians, this time 361 minus index. We're going to bend this around and then multiply it by 2. The key thing is that for the first up until 180, the index or x will return 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, all the way to 180, and then after which it will reverse. And when it reverses, the distance will become 2, so we'll create a bit more of a gap. Let's copy this. Now, click OK. Let's go to our Y object. Let's go to Edit. We are going to paste the same over and we are just going to change the trigonometric function to psi and we'll see what that looks like. Voila! As you can see, we now have half circles. Now, the last step is going to be to leave the background as it is. We don't want to change this. This is beautiful to me. We do want to shrink the foreground based on a percentage value. So what are we going to do? Well, we will create our calculations based on our data source. So let's create a new calculated field. Let's call this TC cells. We will type windows sum, sum of cells. However, we have to divide this by four because we have four values in our model. So we don't want to accidentally multiply. Let's click OK. We would like to duplicate this and let's just rename this to total cells. Nice and quick. And finally, I want us to create our percentage calculation. So TC percentage, which will be TC cells divided by TC total cells. Good so far. Let's click OK. Now we want to modify the X and the Y only when we are considering the foreground. So let's see how we will do this. Let's edit X. So if it's a background, we don't want anything to change. We want this to stay as it is. So therefore, we are going to write the following. If Windows max, max type is equal to foreground, then we are going to apply a modified calculation. Else, we are going to leave it as it is. 
So we will modify for the foreground and leave it as it was for the background. So how are we going to modify this? Well, quite simple really. And when I say quite simple, I mean extremely simple. So let's see what actually happens. All I want to do is put the following. Multiply by TC percentage. I also want to wrap this around. Multiply by TC percentage. Nice and easy. And because I don't want to write this whole thing out again, let's copy all of this text. Firstly, let's click apply. Let's go to our Y object and edit. Let's paste over and let's just type sign. Replace the cosine with sign. And let's click apply and OK. One thing that you note is that the background has stayed the same. It has not been modified at all. Only the foreground has changed and it's because we need to adjust our table calculations for the new incoming table counts. So let's right click on X. Let's go to compute using and path bin. Let's do the same. Compute using. So now we have the color back. What we will need to do is modify the table calculations for the total cells. So I'll right click on X, go to edit table calculation. Under nested calculation, let's select DC total cells and let's type region. There we go. As you can see, we now have that segment. Now this is where the fun starts. Let's remove the type. As you can see, it is all gray. All I'm going to do is underneath the legend, click on foreground, drag it up and drop it on top. There you go. That looks beautiful now. However, we do need to adjust some of the cosmetics. So I'm going to hide my Y axis to create a bit more space. I'm going to double click on my X axis and I'm going to reverse this. As you can see, it will just move the starting point from left to right or from right to left. Now I am going to hide my region. You don't need to see that. I'm also going to do something else and have a little bit of fun. I want text to appear underneath. So to do that, I'm going to create a new calculated field. I'm going to call this zero and literally have zero in between or as the value. I'm going to take zero. I'm going to drop that under columns. I'm going to change the mark type to text. As you can see, it's appeared. I'm going to right click on dual axis. As you can see, we now have text here. I'm going to remove measures because I don't want that measure name. Same as with X. Let's remove the measure names. We don't really need to see that. I hate the Tableau injects this for some strange reason. Well, there's a reason, but I just don't like it. Now, Type again, we don't really need that information either. Or puff in to be fair. From here, all we have to do is take region and let's drop that in. Do text. Let's take cells, drop it into text. Remember, we have to divide it by four, so inline editing. Divide by four. Click enter. Now, what I want to do is take 
themselves. Also drag it onto text mark. And I want to right click, go to quick table calculations and percentage of total. Let's rearrange slightly. Now we can hide all the headers because we don't need them anymore. So we're hiding all the headers. Let's do a little formatting. So I'll right click on the canvas. Let's go to format lines as always, get rid of our grid line, get rid of our zero line. What I then want to do is go on to format borders, get rid of our row divider, and let's add a dashed line. As you can see, I have that dashed line quirk. Now for our X, let's go to color and let's add a white border. So you can actually see the value. The last thing I want to do is modify our text. So let's increase, let's rearrange some things. So we have region first. Let's make that 12 and tableau bold. Let's click apply. I think the value itself can be a lot bigger. Let's make that 14 and also bold. Beautiful. Actually, let's make it 12, not 14. Let's format our sales figure. And let's change this to currency. And let's change it to US one decimal place, display unit in thousands, and let's rename our sheet. Do half circle gauge chart. Last but not least, let's take order date, drag it into filters, filter by year, select 2020 and click OK. Let's show this filter and let's have some fun with our data visualization. It's always good to have fun to see what we've built. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. We drew our circles, we bent them around. We had a model with four different lines for foregrounds and backgrounds. You can have as many as you want. This is how you layer models on top of models on top of models and have different pictures. This is a fantastic example of this and quite a simple example as well. So what I recommend is go through the tutorial again, make sure you have a good understanding and then see you in our final tutorial of our polygon section.